Thank you all for coming and I am going to do some live development today. I'm going to add some more souvenir support to some of the older modules. Last time we've already done nonogram and flags, which um, I suppose at the end of the stream I will actually upload because now we have a big enough bunch of things to add. But first I'm going to add, I guess, poetry. I'm going to take a look at poetry, though I'm not quite sure if this is easy to do. I am planning to do blind maze and um, We'll, we'll see if there's uh, more. I, I mean, I could do Identity Parade, I suppose, but I'm definitely planning to do Blind Maze. So let's uh, start with poetry, first of all. Here's um, Souvenir, obviously. Let's uh, close these tabs. I'm going to uh, find uh, poetry here in my folder and then take a look at the uh, decompiled code. All right, let's open this. Let's close all the other ones that I've looked at in the past. Poetry, here we go. Poetry, click, poetry module. All right, so what I need to find out, so th first of all, the question that we're going to ask on Souvenir is um, which word was pressed in the first and second stage? So there are three stages, and the third stage will still be you know, visible at the end. Actually, that's not true. It gets replaced with a heart shape thing, right? So I could actually ask about all three stages. Right, but we need to find out which words were actually pressed in each stage. So let's take a look at how the module uh, decides, or rather what specifically the module does when you press on one of the buttons. So it'll call this on press button, this on press method rather. It outputs a log message. Uh, it checks whether it is one of the correct answers. If so, it calls this. Uh, which calls jump, which does this, is jump true? Oh, okay, so that, that starts an animation, I, I'm guessing, because the, um, you know, the, the sort of graphic of the goal sort of does a little jump. Uh, play pen sound, that's the, you know, the pen writing sound that you hear. Then there is a debug message that you add the current stage. And then if that is the last stage, then we've passed the module. Yeah, I, I guess that means we need to hook into the um, a button press handler and then check if current stage was incremented. If it was, then it was correct. If it wasn't, then it, it, it wasn't. Right, because if, if it was wrong, then uh, as you can see, yeah, see that the stage, uh, the stage number doesn't change. All right, so it, it yeah, it, 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 it regenerates new words, but the stage number is still the same, right? So, okay, so let's open Souvenir, and let's start by adding poetry in this super long list here, const string poetry equals. All right, so here we need to know the module type uh, thing, so I'm going to take a look at this through GitHub. Uh, assets poetry dot oops it's here in poetry module poetry uh, scripts it must be in scripts there you go poetry module that cs and that's not actually what I'm looking for I'm looking for the prefab the prefab contains the module type there you go it's poetry lowercase right that's important because it's case sensitive m n o p k l o and then we have I can't type today. Poetry, there we go. Process poetry. All right, so we go here. We add a new I enumerable object poetry, came bomb module. And here we have our method. And we want this with, now here we want the name of the type, which is the class declaration up here. So that's poetry module. And we want the, uh, um, buttons. The buttons are, well, let's take a look at the start method, because in the start method, the buttons are associated. They're km selectable equals word selectables, and that's probably public, which means that that's probably assigned by unity. So we are looking for the, uh, yeah, word selectables. I guess that's a good name for it. Get fields. It's a km selectable array. It has this name and it is public. So we do this, right? We want to look at the um, stage counter, which is uh, current stage. This is the integer that we're looking for. So FLD stage, get field int, uh, that. Um, and I, I, I guess that's it. That's all we need. So now if any of these are null, then something went wrong. So I'm gonna bail out. 
so we yield break, and and then we, uh, so, so we we start out at stage zero, I guess. Let me actually quickly check that. So this is assigned only by correct, which means that it starts at zero, and then here it is incremented, and the only places, yeah. So it's it's not assigned anywhere else. So it starts with zero, definitely. All right. So then we say while true. Okay. So we're gonna wait a frame, and then if the stage on the module, which is FLD stage get, is now different from stage, then that means we've passed a stage. Um, you know, actually, no, this is not how I'm going to. I, I do need to hook into them. So actually, I'm just going to wait for state for the stage number to be equal to three, which I believe is what this is. Stage, OK, it uh, must be assigned like, oh, this is not ever assigned anywhere. Oh, it's public. All right, in that case, it is probably mentioned here, and it's called stage count, stage count three. All right, so the author decided to set the stage count in Unity, but that's OK. Um, you know, now that I think about it, we can make this more resilient by actually getting the stage count from the field. So that's this. And because it's public, we have to do this. And then we make sure that this is not null. OK, and then while this is less than FLD stage count dot get. Um, yield return. So this, this time we can, you know, uh, wait more than just a frame. All right, but while this is waiting, we are going to need to do things. Um, all right, so we're going to have a list of answers. And then every time that a button is pressed, we're going to check if that button was correct, and if so, um, add it to this list. So we're going to have to look at all of these came selectables. So we're going to uh, loop through them. Um, actually, let's, let's get the selectables first, FLD word selectables.get. And then obviously, if that is null, we need to bail out. And if it is not equal to six, like if the length is not equal to six, then, you know, I expect six. So if it's not six, then something is wrong. Something is unexpected. So I want to bail out as well. All right. So abandoning poetry because um, word selectable has unexpected length uh, or contains null. I'm going to check if it's null as well. So expected length uh, six uh, got values. And then I have an array. OK, so the array is going to be. OK, so OK, so first of all, let's uh, make sure I don't forget this. If any of them is equal to null, we want to bail out as well. And now uh, if uh, selectables select. OK, so if if one of them is null, we're going to say null, else not null or whatever. It doesn't really matter how, uh, as, as long as I can read it in the log when I see it. So this will give me the list of uh, selectables, or rather it tells me whether each of them is null or not null, which implicitly also tells me the length of the array. All right, so now for each of them, we have an old handler, which is the uh, uh, selectables i dot on interact. And then I'm going to change this to a new one, like this. Come on, <laughs> I, I keep auto formatting by uh, instinct. All right, so we need to first of all get the previous stage count. So var uh, previous stage equals FLD stage get. And then we run the old handler. And that will tell us, and then at the end we return its value. Whoops. Um, and then so now, if FLD stage dot get is greater than the previous stage, then we know that this was correct. So we're going to add this to our answers list. Now, what do we add? We need to find out what was actually pressed. And in order to know what was actually pressed, we need a copy of the i variable. So um, um, 
I need to, okay, so I have the eye, which means that I know which button was pressed, but I need to find out what's written on the button. So when a new stage is generated, which happens in new stage, print words, print words, um, kvp2 word, word table, okay. Oh, oh, I see. I can just get this. The, ah, bingo. I have an array of text meshes. Now I can, I can just get it from there. So var fld, uh, this is the type, words equals get field of that. And the name was just words and it's public, right? It is public. Yes, it is public, right? If that's null, bail out, right? And then we'll do the same bailing out as we did here, but with words, right? So where words is actually, you know, I'm word text meshes. I'm, I'm going to call it that just just to uh, uh, text mesh or word text meshes equals FLD word text meshes get right. And if that is not six, uh, or any of them is null, or the thing itself is null. There you go. Abandoning poetry because words has unexpected length or contains null expected length six good values all right that should be good right so now we can simply add uh word text meshes uh j dot text all right that will be the text that's written on it except at this point because because i'm doing this after the handler um that would uh, give me the new word so i want the old word so i'm I need to get the word before I run the handler, just on the off chance that I need it, and then I'm going to add it here. Okay, now then, uh, here we need the uh, module solve count, we need to increment that, it's uh, poetry, there you go. And now just to make sure that this actually does the right thing, I'm just going to log the answers that were pressed. So I'm going to say souvenir zero po poetry answers that were pressed. And then after the module ID, we're just going to have answers. And we're going to join that with commas. All right, so I'm not actually asking a question yet. I just want to see in the logging that it returns the correct words that were actually pressed. So I'm going to test that in the game. And to do that, I need to rebuild souvenir. So let's find that in the list. And while we're at it, I also need to copy this uh, mod into my mods folder, which I can do here. So that is now poetry. And uh, I can recompile this. And then once that is compiled, we will now have both souvenir and poetry in here. So I can just run the game now. And I should probably make sure that you guys can hear the sounds. All right, here we go. So I'm now going to run a bomb with two modules. One of them will be a uh, souvenir, but the souvenir obviously will not ask a question. You're going to need a bigger bomb. All right. And then this will hopefully be a poetry. Yes, it is a poetry. Now let's see if the answers are in the log uh, for poetry bingo. Um, it tells me the location of all of the words. The correct word is flow. All right, that was correct. Then the next word is crowd. That was correct. Then the next word is sunshine. So I'm going to intentionally press a wrong one. And then ocean. All right. Souvenir, the uh, poetry answers that were pressed, flow, crowd, and ocean. So it did not add the wrong one that I added, that I pressed, so that's good. Everything is working correctly. So now that we've done that, let's, um, let's add the questions uh, to the module. So for each stage, um, I need to make sure at this point that the number of answers is Actually, yeah, you know, if the number of answers is different from the uh, the um, the stage count like that, then you know I, I don't expect that ever to be the case. But you know, if it is the case, then something went wrong. So I'm going to abandon poetry because 
uh, the number of answers captured is not equal to the number of stages played, which is this. Answers were this, all right? Um, like that. Okay, so we want the uh, number of stages played, which is FLD stage count dot get, and the answers were answers join with commas. There you go. And then we add these questions to the module. Um, so for each answer, uh, we have the actual answer, which is a string, and an index, which tells us the stage number. So I'll call it st, it's the stage number. Uh, make question. So we want to create a question called poetry um, yeah, answers, I guess. Right, let's add that enum member here to our really long list. Um, okay, L, M, N, O, it's right here. Souvenir question. What was the answer in the something stage of poetry? Right, we're gonna show four answers. And those four answers are potentially these. So I'm just gonna copy this list, except it's not Melanie, it's not um, Lacey, obviously, it's not Jane, and it's not Hannah, all right? So it's one of the others. Let's remove all of this. Let's uh, change those, uh, those. Uh, 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 regular expression, there we go. Um, all right, so these are all of the all of the possible answers that could come up, so I'm going to put them all here. And then we have our example format arguments. The group size obviously is one. Um, so it could be the first stage, it could be the second stage, it could be the third stage, and that's it. There are only three stages. All right, so we're gonna ask that question and the module key obviously is poetry. The format arguments are uh, first, second, or third. So it's the stage number, but it's plus one because the stage numbers are numbered from zero. Uh, then the correct answers, there's only one correct answer, which is, right, instead of uh, what, what, what was the answer? I should probably say what was the answer you pressed because there may have been more than one correct answer But we only captured the one that was actually pressed All right, so the correct answer would be answers st Which, which is ants right ants we actually have that variable right there we we could add the remaining answers uh yeah, I'm gonna do that. So the remaining answers for the other stages are now preferred wrong answers, so we can do that. All right, and uh, it doesn't like that because answers is a list, so we need to change that to an array. All right, I did not mean to run this. All right, so now let's recompile Souvenir and test this in the game. I'll wait for this to finish building, there we go. And then I'll run the game. And then while this is loading, I'm going to take a look at the log file. Okay. You're going to... Oops, not that. We're going to run this. Have you got your wires crossed? <laughs> All right. Poetry. Okay, so we have sunshine. Interesting. I'm clicking it and nothing is happening. Huh. Let's see if anything gets logged. There's a null reference exception, okay. Let's investigate that. So this is uh, when I clicked it. So... Hmm, okay. The old handler shouldn't be null. Okay, all of this here runs at the, you know, at the beginning. So I'm, I'm just gonna add a yield return null here. Uh, just to make sure that the start method has run and therefore that the on interact is assigned. Oh yeah, of course, that is done in start. So I do need to make sure that start has run. So th this will probably fix it. 
or if it doesn't fix it, at least it was an issue that needed fixing. So I, I have at least fixed something. Right, I can now close this. I won't need that anymore. Mod loading complete. And here we go. Start a bomb. Right. Click. All right, so now the right answer is identity. Let's press that. Bingo, that did fix it. All right, clarity, words, or ocean. Let's press clarity. And then we have black. What was the answer you press in the first stage of poetry? That was identity. That is correct. I'm going to press a wrong answer and identity. Yep, there we go. All right, I close the game. So that's poetry done. What was the next one I was going to do? Uh, blind maze. Let's take a look at the uh, blind maze uh, DLL. So blind maze would be this one. So I'm going to copy that to here and I'm going to remove poetry because we don't need that anymore. All right, this time I'm going to do it in a different order. I'm going to start the uh, I'm going to put the question here first. I uh, go here, blind maze uh, colors. Okay, what was the northwest, southeast color in blind maze? All right, blind, whoops, blind maze. Um, could, could six of them fit? How many possible colors are there even? There are only five, so it's, it's okay if we just put four. If, if we show only four of them. All right, so let's um, do this. All right, <laughs> remove all of the spaces, please. Thank you. Okay, and then we do this. And our example format arguments are now uh, north, south, west, and east. And the group size is one. Right, blind maze. Now I need to find out what the um, module type for blind maze is. I could do that in the source code, but there's another way, which is through the mod selector. So I'm going to show you that right now. If you go to the mod selector and then you click mods info and then you click blind maze, um, it's the one on the bottom. All right, so it's blind maze, this time with capital letters and no space. So we go here to our list blind maze would go here, blind maze, there you go, and then here in our list we add it here, blind maze process blind maze, private i enumerable, let's do that, kmbon module, there you go, copy that, and then here we want the name of the type, uh, which I'm going to look up here. So in the mods folder, blind maze, we have here, blind maze, blind maze, and blind maze. All right, so it's literally blind maze. There you go. All right. Now, where does blind maze store the colors? Let's take a look at start. There is a loop of four, and there are four buttons, so that's probably it. There you go, button colors, and it's a random number from zero to five. So this is what we need. So we need the button colors array, which we get from comp, but the type is um, int array, and it is called button colors and it's private, right? If that is null or button colors equals null, uh, then uh, you'll break obviously. And we also need to find out whether it's solved, which I'm hoping there is a boolean for it. So let's find out what happens. Let's actually find out where handle pass is called. It's never called. Interesting. Oh, because I'm looking at the start method only. Uh, right, handle pass. This is where, the, there we go, this dot solved, and that is private. Okay, so this time it's capitalized. Uh, yeah, and then while the module is not solved, we're going to wait uh, for 0.1 seconds. All right, there we go. And then once we've solved it, we can literally just look at this, um, you know, this, this colors array, um, button colors. Let me just very quickly make sure where this was uh, ever used. 
in start it is uh oh i see it is only ever used in start and it is used both to log obviously and then i'm guessing it will be used uh, let me mark this oops so if i put my mouse sorry the cursor on it then it'll be highlighted so i can more easily see if it is used somewhere else uh for example there we go this is where it's used next color and I'm not sure why they call it next color, but uh, they, ah, okay. So when the module activates, oh, I see, this is the actual colors. And then this is, right, and <laughs> it should be called next color, but oh, I see, there's a local variable, well, whatever. Anyway, so it's a color array and they pass that into this uh, coroutine, which will show the actual colors. So I guess we're gonna take a, a copy of this array as well. No, actually, we don't need that. We need the names of the colors. All right, this is private, which means that it is probably assigned somewhere up here. Uh, let me just find this.colors. There we go. Okay, so the uh, color names are, the first one is red, the second one is green. Uh, the third one, Right, so this has a bit of a green component, but it has a full blue component, so that's going to be blue. And then we have gray and uh, yellow. So these are the five colors. Um, let's take a look at this uh, question that we created, because I just realized, yeah, we could have just copied that. That was already in the right order. I mean, I would have had to check that it's in the right order, but anyway, so now we have that. Okay, and then, so that those are the color names. So once it is solved, first of all, I need to uh, increment this, right, blind maze, yes, that. And then I'm going to get the button colors from the field of the button colors, so let's get that. If that is uh, null, then we're gonna yield break. And if it is different from four or, button colors, or any of these button colors is less than zero or greater than zero, one, two, three, four, right, then we want to bail out. So we're going to copy another one of those messages that we have somewhere. Oh yeah, that's not the, there we go, this is the kind of message we're looking for. Um, blind maze, there we go. Abandoning blind blind <laughs> blind maze because um, because um because uh either because button colors is null no is uh, has unexpected length or unexpected value expected four values uh zero to four and then we log what the actual values are which is button colors that Okay, so now we've done our increment, we've gotten the button colors. Um, now, when you solve the module, let me just quickly check where the handle solve, the handle strike, no, handle pass is what it's called. All right, this starts the core routine after the handle pass, which means that, um, yeah, the fade of the colors happens after the pass. And as we can see here, um, it will, while, okay, right. It will add this every 0.01 seconds until, okay, this is not quite clear here. I would have preferred for it to you know, specifically say how long it's taken. And also for it to do this is kind of unwise. It should just say you'll return null. Uh, but regardless, it does this. So it's probably going to take somewhere around uh, two seconds, I guess. So I want to put a delay here. So I want to wait for two seconds um, once it's solved so that the animation can finish. All right, before it will ask the question. Okay. So now we're gonna uh, add, there's only one, no, there's four possible questions, one for each of the buttons. So we add questions for the module and it's um, button colors select. So we have a color and an index. Now I need to find out 
how the buttons are numbered. And I'm going to assume that it's this order. So it's north first, then east, then south, then west. All right, so var button names, um, north, east, south, and west. And yes, I'm seeing the typo. There we go. OK, we are now going to make a question for every button. And it's the blind maze question. The module key is blind maze. The format argument, obviously, is the um, uh, name of the button. So button names index. And then the correct answers, which, of which there's only one, which is the color, which is call. But that's an integer. So we actually need color names of that. All right, and that's that, that's that, that's that. And now we recompile that and test that in the game. That was actually pretty quick. And both of those were very simple modules, so um, that was easy to do. All right, let's test that. Uh, here we have a bomb with two modules. Don't cross the wires, all right? I can see the buttons from Blind Maze. All right, so um, we have uh, north is yellow, west is green, east is blue, and south is red. And the, uh, okay, so we're at one five, maze rotation is zero, that's useful. Um, it doesn't tell me which, uh, maze I need to be in. Oh, I already have it open here, but that's okay because I can just uh, take the last digit of the serial number because we have zero solved modules. The last digit of the serial number is a zero. So, wow, so the rotation is zero, solved is zero, number, the maze number is zero, and uh, our, uh, our starting location is one five, which means we are here. Right, zero, one, two, three. No, it's one base. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I want to go northeast, uh, northwest, then north, northeast, east, north. All right, there was a bug. Let's see what the bug was. One. I want to reload this. Um, all right, so I need to find out uh, if souvenir output some kind of message somewhere. There we go. Nope, that's not the one. Hmm. It didn't output a message. All right, uh, it, an error message. So I have a suspicion that this is actually due to my two second delay. Because at the time when we solved the blind maze, Souvenir might have realized, okay, I'm the only module left and I don't currently have any questions in the queue. So you know what, in hindsight then, I'm just going to remove that delay. Uh, because it's just going to be more trouble than it's worth, and it's not actually that big a deal. Right? I mean, you would have to read and interpret the question while the fade animation is still happening. I'm going to have to take a, a closer look this time how long the animation actually takes. I didn't actually pay attention to that last time. All right, so let's take a look at the log now. The location is determined after rotation. The matrix is 180 degrees. So let's take a look at the last digit of the serial number, which is a two. Okay, so this time, uh, north is green and east is green, west and south are both gray. Uh, gray, gray, gray. Right, okay. Um, so um, the maze return, so there are... Mm. Right, what was the... <laughs> I forgot what the last digit was. It was a two. Okay, so we're in maze number two, and we need to do the 180 rotation first, and then the starting location is three, two, so it's this one. Okay, so we want to go southwest, west, southwest, west, and then southeast, east, and then south, south. Hmm. Right, so the animation was pretty quick, so I think I'm fine with the, uh... Right, let's see if there is a, uh... There's still no log message anywhere. Alright, I'm not seeing a log message for Blind Maze. So now, at this point, because I'm kind of stumped, 
the obvious thing to do now is to add more logging. So I'm going to have to, uh, let's just add some logging. All right. So here we're going to say uh, blind maze waiting. All right. Blind maze solved. All right. But let's just see um, if it reaches this point. Okay, now I think I might have forgotten to build it. Is that what happened? <laughs> if that is what happened, then that would be funny, but uh, we, we, we'll, we'll see. If it works now, then that's what it was. Okay, so this time uh, the maze rotation is zero and the starting location is three, five. The last digit of the serial number is a 3, so we want maze 3 with 0 rotation and we want 3, 5, so we are here. So we're gonna go and, you know, I've, just so I don't have to write down those colors, I'm just gonna open a screenshot of that. Um, so we want north, north, east, east, uh, north, north, west, west, north. There we go. What was the west color in Blind Maze? Well, it was yellow. There we go. All right. So I did actually just forget to build the thing, which I suppose is, uh, uh, which I suppose can happen. So I, I should expect to see those log messages now that I added. There you go. Solved and answers and already answered. Okay. So that seems to be working. So I'm just going to remove those log messages again because we don't need those anymore. And then let's move on to Identity Parade, I suppose. Um, right, Souvenir could ask which traits were selectable. Asking for the names listed on the module will probably be too much. I agree, you know, because most of the time the diffuser doesn't actually read out all of the names. Uh, and, you know, that would add too much to it. So I'm going to ask only for the uh, build, attire, and uh, hair, I think is what the third one was. So let's take a look. This time I'm going to use the uh, GitHub repository to look at the source code. Um, uh, there it is, Identity Parade script. Okay, so when you press one of these buttons, then it will call one of these methods and it changes the index. Uh, all right, so hair entries. Let's see where that is declared. It's a list of strings. And it's private, so where does... Ooh. Ah, okay. Oh, I see, okay. So, for example, Andy. Um, there we go, so that's what it does. Um, ah, okay, so it uses those methods to add um, the traits to the list. So at that point, every list will have just one trait, and then it will add uh, random additional traits. So for example, for the hair, right? Yeah, okay. It's, n it's not entirely clear to me at this point how it makes sure that it never has two, you know, two valid combinations, but I, I don't care. All I need is I need to know uh, these lists. All right, so we're gonna start with um, the list here. H I and string identity parade equals. All right, so now we need the module type, which we can do, which we can get by looking at the prefab, which is here. Module type is identity parade lowercase. There we go, and then here. We're going to add this process identity parade. Yes, I wrote that wrong. There we go. Private enumerable km bomb module. All right, and we want that. No, not that. We want the uh, name of the type, which is that identity parade script. All right, and then the fields that we want are these. All right, hair entry, uh, right, hair entries equals get field and f 
field. Thank you. And this is a list of strings. Uh, we get that from the component hair entries, and it's not public. All right, and we do that three times. Build and attire. Right, build and attire. I'm just going to type that. All right, now if any of these is uh, null, If any of these is null, then we just bail out, and then we just wait for it to get solved, which, um, right, let's see what happens when we press the convict button, and it's correct. Right, so there is no is solved thing, but that's okay. Um, what we can do instead is we just have a variable that starts at false, um, and then we set the, yeah, actually I'm gonna, I'm going to wait for one frame to make sure that the start method has called, has uh, the start method has run and all of the, you know, events are associated. And then I'm going to say that the on uh, pass thing here, I'm just going to add a delegate, a handler to this, which will set solved to true. All right. And yeah, that one requires a return value. I don't know what to return there, but I did this before in a different thing and I return false there and there was never a problem with that so I'm gonna keep doing that. So now while not solved yield return wait per seconds point one. Okay so now we know that the module was solved so now let's get the, uh, the hairs which is hair entries get uh, builds build entries dot get and attires uh, tire entries that get now if any of these is null then we just bail out and we expect all of them to have exactly three um, elements all right so if hairs.count is not three or builds.count is not three or attires.count is not three then we're gonna do the bailout so let's just copy this message here put that here, abandoning identity parade, because um, hairs, uh, sorry, hair entries is what the actual field is called, build entries or, and or, could be any number of them, attire entries. Um, what just happened? Right, has unexpected length. Uh, so the lengths are gonna be expected three. Okay, hairs.count, builds.count, and attire.count. Uh, now that it's solved, I'm going to increment this. Uh, it's called identity parade. Let's put, let's put that here. And now we're going to ask three questions, namely which of these hairs, builds, and attires was listed. Now let me just quickly take a look at the identity parade manual. Um, there are only four possible each time, and three of them, th three of them are always shown on the module, right? So there is always. Wait, am I wrong? How many? Oh, there is also white uh, and black. Okay, so there are actually enough. So that's that's at least six. And three of them are on the module, and three of them are not on the module, which means that I can ask either which one was and which one was not. Right? Both of them are reasonable questions. So let's do that. So I'm first of all, I'm going to take, you know, lists of these. So first of all, uh, let's do that. So these are the unique um, uh, hair colors. All right. So we're gonna. Uh, add this to the end of every line and then remove the new lines. Okay, so these are the hair colors and then we have the builds which are gonna be these Let's do that. Okay, I meant to do that only within the selection so that Okay, and then finally we also need the attires, so I'm just going to take that, uh, select that, and make them 
distinct, right? And then, you know what? I just realized I can actually just do this. Ah, lol. Okay. Now let's let let's add the um, the value here in our big enum. So we have h i. Here we have. Look, that's there's still another ice cream question there. So identity parade. Okay, so do I want to make this one question type or do I want to make it three different questions? I think I'll make it just one. So I'll just call it traits. Um, so which um, hair color, uh, build, or attire was or was not uh, listed in Identity Parade? Identity Parade. So we have four possible answers. These are all of the possibilities. So I'm just gonna do this, right? And then, just, oops. And then just put all of those here. And now our example format arguments are which um, hair color um, was listed, which hair color was not listed. Oop, with a space, please. Right, and then we do the same thing with um, build, and the same thing again with attire. There's a comma here, attire, attire. Right, and this time the group size is two because we have two, um, you know, two values. They are uh, the trait and was or was not. Okay. Now, once the module is solved, we need to increment, so I've already done that. Um, we have three traits, and each of these, so these are, these are all lists, right? Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to um, do all six of them separately. Right, so for this module, we have a question identity parade traits. The module key is, of course, identity parade. The format arguments for I keep doing this. Um, so the first is the trait. So we're going to say hair color. And then was. The correct answers are uh, hair entries. Right? Uh, all right. It, it wants that to be an array. Wait, what, what's wrong with this? Two hair entries. Oh, I see, that's the field, I'm sorry, hairs. All right, there you go. And that's a list, and we turn that into an array. Okay, so that's the first question. Now, for the, the one that says was not, we need to know what the valid hair colors are. So that's why I have this here. So I'm gonna say um, var, uh, valid hairs, var uh, valid builds, and then var valid attires. Okay, and then the ones that were not shown are the uh, the the valid hairs, except uh, the ones that were actually on the module, right? And then that will generate an array of the ones that are. All right, why is it complaining? Except, hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so this is a string array. And oh, hairs is already a list, so we don't need to put that in inside that. All right. Okay, so that's the two for hair. Now let's do the same thing for build. So we just change hair color to build. So here we have builds, and then here we have valid builds. And then we do the same thing again. Also forgot the comma here. Lots of commas missing. Uh, now we do the same thing with attire. All right, which attire was listed, that would be these, and which ones were not listed are valid attires except those. All right, that should be it. Right, um, let's just test it. Okay, so let's find identity parade, which is here. So that's identity parade, and we need to, not need to, but I'm going to delete blind maze because we don't need that anymore. 
and then did this build yes it did okay and so I'm gonna run run the game I don't need that screenshot from earlier anymore and then here we go we have two modules introducing the double deco bomb <laughs> click all right so the traits that are actually listed are uh, gray uh, muscular t-shirt blonde slim and uh, tank top white short and jumper now i really do hope that the answer will be in the output log the correct suspect is penny all right and Penny is muscular, blonde hair, t-shirt. All right, so it's that, that, that. Blonde, muscular, t-shirt, click. Which build was listed? Um, muscular, slim, or short? Muscular, slim, and short are not there. <laughs> oh, I see. Hmm. It is now including the, uh, yeah, the, you know, all right. So I should probably actually make it separate uh, question types because otherwise it, it will show the wrong things right reload this let me just see here right see so on the hair color it would have said t-shirt on the build it would have said red so we need to we need to split this up okay so we're gonna have hair colors builds and attires builds and attires Right, so now we only need the was or was, was not listed. And this is going to be which hair color, which build was or was not, and which um, attire. All right, so now we're just going to have was and uh, was not. So the group size is now one. And then the valid hair colors are, of course, these. Uh, let's delete that and then the valid builds are of course these up to tall and then these are the attires okay so here we have hair colors and here we have builds and then we have attires and then we need to fix these because obviously it's now expecting only one format argument so that should do it. Let's auto format this, which takes a moment because the file is huge. Let's recompile that and rebuild the mod. Let me quickly make sure. Yeah, I think this all looks good. So let's run the game once more. Okay, click. All right, so we have gray tall jumper. Blonde, short, and tank top. T-shirt, slim, and white. All right, and the answer is I just realized it lists all of them here, so I could have just looked at that. Duh. Right, Dylan Short. I always go one too far. Alright, um, blonde hair and tank top. Alright, blonde. Alright, there's a bug. Let's see. Format exception. Okay. Um, bingo. That's the one. Right, so let's close the game, uh, rebuild this, rebuild this, and run the whole thing again. I should have just paid more attention to save myself from that, because obviously I knew that the risk of that uh, existed. Right, run that. Okay, so the correct answer this time is... Nate, who is fat. 
Uh, red and jumper. Red and jumper. All right. Click, click, click. Which hair color was listed in Identity Parade? Right, so now we can check. It was red, white, and blonde. And out of those, indeed, only one is shown. So let's take a look at the other answers that were generated, which was not listed. So white, red, and blonde were all listed. Yes, white, red, and blonde were all listed. And brown is the one that wasn't. All right, this is working very well. Um, let's, let me just check the attires. The displayed attire options are jumper, blazer, and tank top. Uh, jumper, blazer, tank top. Perfect. All right. So, brown. Yeah, it was white. Okay. So, identity parade is also done. Dylan is short. Short, uh, blonde, and tank top. Okay. So, now, Souvenir will ask the question, which attire was listed? And we can actually still look at it by uh, cycling this. And of course, we can also see what the correct answer was. So what we're going to do is we're going to block these keys from, uh, from being cyclable. And we're also going to change the displays so that they don't display the answer anymore. We're going to have an, a message such as identity parade has been solved or something like that. So let's find out how to do that. Let's take a look at the, um, uh, the, the DLL. So we'll uh, go to the mods folder, identity parade, and here's the DLL. Okay, now when these buttons are pressed, they call these methods here which change the, um, uh, the, the text on the displays. All right, so we're going to have to hook into the uh, the, the click handler for those buttons, uh, and and then overwrite those. So those buttons are, um, all right, uh, the buttons are all listed here. They're all these KM selectables. There we go. All of these. In I'm I'm going to include the convict button in my. Actually, do, do I need to do that? Let me let me just quickly check what the convict button does. Uh, if the module's already solved. It turns out it does nothing, which means that you can actually still get a strike by... Um, it, it even specifically checks if the text is correct, which means that if we're going to manipulate this and change the text, then you're especially going to get strikes. So I'm going to override all of them, even the convict button. All right. So let's start by this. Uh, buttons to override, in fact, FLD, because we want the fields first. Now I'm going to put this down as an array, like this. Remove all of these and put this these in, into strings, like this. Right, we now have an array of strings. And then for each of these strings, we want to get the field of type km selectable from the component with that name. So I'm going to call that FLD name because it's the name of the field. And also all of them are public. So we're going to go is public true and then to array. So now we have an array of buttons we need to override. So we check if any of these is null, then we bail out. And then here we get the actual buttons. So for every Oops. So for every field, we get the value like this, and that gives us an array. And now we need to check if any of those is null. If buttons to override any button is null, then we're going to bail out. And now for each button, we have an old handler. In fact, Wait, we don't even need to get the old handler because we don't care. Uh, we're just going to set the on interact to a new delegate. And I'm still going to um, simulate the, well, not simulate, I'm going to include the, um, the game sound playing. So instead of this.audio, I, I suppose. I can just play the, uh, I can use the souvenir audio thing, but I'm going to use the button transform 
and this should say uh, button press, which does have the value zero, which is why the decompiler turned into zero, but you know, it's better to be explicit. And then uh, we add the interaction punch and then do nothing else. All right. So this will override all of the button handlers. So now the buttons don't do anything anymore. And now we need to override the um, displays. The displays are called, um, well, these are just strings. We want the text meshes, the, one, the, the, the actual game objects that display the text. All right, so once again, we're going to remove all of that. Ah. There we go. All right, now we have a list of strings. So for the text meshes, we're going to get all of these. For each of these field names, uh, get the field of type text mesh from the component using the field name. Is this one? Of course, they are still public because uh, they are assigned by Unity. So they're all public. And there we go. To array. And then we make sure that none of these is null. So if any of these is null, then we bail out. var uh, text fields to override uh, text meshes. Actually, I'll just call it text meshes. Um, select all of these, get all of their values. Um, if any of those is null, All right, and now I'm gonna change all of their texts. So the first one is going to be identity parade. No, identity parade, a two separate parade has been solved. One, two, three. And then we're going to test this because I think that's all we need. So let's run the game again. All right, so once again, I'm going to use the log file to get the uh, answer, and the answer is Gemma. And it's short gray hair and blazer, like this. Identity parade has been solved, and we cannot change this anymore. Okay, that seems to work. What hair color was not listed? Well, the hair colors listed were gray, white, and blonde. Gray, white, and blonde, so brown is the right answer. Let's just quickly submit that to um, uh, GitHub. So these are the changes that we made. We added the fields, and then we did the manipulation of the buttons and the text meshes. So identity parade. Make sure the buttons can no longer be cycled and the answer and, and blank out the answer in uh, when uh, after solved. Make sure the buttons can no longer be cycled and blank out the answer after solved. I'm okay with that. All right, let's submit that. And then, of course, uh, here in Unity, we need to update the workshop item. So, identity parade. Make sure that the um, buttons can no longer be cycled and the answer no longer be seen after solve, after the module is solved. All right. Thank you all for watching. Uh, that was uh, Identity Parade. And thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, then uh, hit me up on Discord or drop a line below if you're watching this on YouTube. And I'll see you again in the next stream. Goodbye.